What is going on guys? Welcome to FTV Family Time Vlogs. I know what you're thinking. Either he's obsessed with Orange Bird or he just moved to Florida. And it's neither, really. I mean, I do love Orange Bird. Look how cute he is. How could you not love him? But I wanted to do a story. So my youngest son, he doesn't necessarily like Orange Bird. And we love Orange Bird, obviously. But he didn't really know the backstory. He thought it was just like a character that was created to be cute by Disney and sell merchandise. But it's not that at all. I know a lot of you might know the backstory and the origin of Orange Bird. But I did a lot of digging and I compiled the best story that I could out of every story that I read and things that I knew. And... I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I kind of started playing with images and doing like movies with images and having a movie and whatnot. And I'm practicing. I just started, but I think it looks pretty good as my first video. So I kind of want to maybe continue this as a series and just do backstories of characters. So today I wanted to show you the story of Orange Bird. All right, without further ado, let's go. It is 1945 and the orange business is flourishing in Florida. So much so that Walt Disney and Florida's natural own orange juice come to an arrangement allowing none other than Donald Duck to become the official mascot used to sell their orange juice. This agreement would last for 75 years, but 14 years later, 1969 comes along. With Disney World theme park on the horizon, Disney and what is now the FDC, Florida Department of Citrus, come up with a new deal to promote Florida's orange juice, not only inside of the Magic Kingdom Park, but outside as well. In addition to this contract, the FDC gave Walt Disney $3 million, and with today's inflation, that would roughly be $20 million. This funding would go to build an attraction called the Tropical Serenade Show, better known today as the Enchanted Tiki Room. It would also provide funding to a juice station known as Sunshine Tree Terrace, but not the Sunshine Tree Terrace that is now located across from the Swiss Family Robinson House, but the nicer, more tiki looking station where Aloha Isle now sits next to the Tiki Room. A little while later in 1970, for Disney to show its appreciation, they had legendary Bob Moore draw a character for the FDC to use as a new promotional mascot that would not only help sell Florida orange juice inside the park, but it would also advertise Walt Disney's new Magic Kingdom outside of the park as well. And with that, the world was introduced to the cutest orange bird ever drawn to life by Bob Moore. With little to no time at all after being drawn, Florida billboards, newspapers, signs, and juice stops spawned all over Florida, and Orange Bird quickly found himself leading one of Florida and Disney's greatest marketing campaigns ever. Q. Early 1971, it didn't take long for Orange Bird to become a star. In fact, before Disney World even opened, he had his own line of books and songs on the radio written by the Sherman Brothers. That helped give Orange Bird his own backstory and persona, but here's where things get a little tricky. Also in the early 70s, Orange Bird was given, shall we say, a voice. And to make an even bigger marketing campaign, the FDC appointed a rising star, Miss America winner and singer-songwriter Anita Bryant as Orange Bird's very own voice. Since we all know Orange Bird could not have a voice of his own, the public was quick to embrace it. Now we're in the mid-1970s, Orange Bird and Anita Bryant, the FDC and Walt Disney World Company worked well as a triple threat marketing campaign. By this time, we had multiple commercials all over television networks, meet and greets at the park, special radio slots, 
billboards, merchandise, and posters appearing at the park and all over juice stalls along the Florida highways featuring the trio, it was safe to say it was going great for Disney in Florida, but unfortunately, it was about to take a turn for the worse. Here comes the late 1970s, and with that, Anita Bryant finds herself in a bunch of personal trouble outside of her professional career when she became a big advocate and merged as another voice outside of Disney, but this time, it was for an anti-LGBTQ movement. With all the negative backlash being generated by the press and people, Disney and the FDC felt obligated to part ways with Anita Bryant. And as a result, our cute lovable orange bird had no voice yet again. In fact, every single commercial on network television and every radio slot, billboards and promotional images and anything which was almost everything with Anita Bryant or Orange Bird had been pulled and disappeared outside of the magical gates almost with the snap of a finger. A few years later, in 1981, the contract with Disney and FDC was surprisingly not only renewed but the FDC agreed to give Disney enough funding to make another juice station to sell Florida orange juice in the park which today is known as the Shashire Cafe but sadly the contract was a little lopsided because at this point the orange bird character was only being utilized and present within the Disney World gates Five years later, it's 1986, once again the contract between Disney and the FDC was up for renewal, but by this time, since Orange Bird was pretty much abandoned by the FDC because of his already tarnished image outside the magical gates, the FDC decided to part ways with Disney and not renew the contract early to mid 1990s Disney still kept Orange Bird around for some of the early 90s but he was appearing less and less in fact by the attraction installs mid 90s refurbishment every trace of Orange Bird had sadly vanished a decade later 2004 after Orange Bird's 30-year run as a Florida Orange Juice and Walt Disney World Ambassador and after almost 10 years banishment and being buried by the mouse, he found himself as Tokyo's Orange Day character. This is because Tokyo is not owned or operated by the Walt Disney World Company, but it is allowed to use any of Disney's stories or characters, so they chose to use the forgotten Orange Bird. And once again, he was an instant success. I mean, look at him. How could he not be? It is 2009, and Orange Bird not only found himself international at this point, but he was also brought back home to the Walt Disney World. And with many Orange Bird merch shops selling out instantly between 2009 and 2015, this bird started to find himself in more places than he ever saw before, including multiple Disney parks and resort stores around Around the world. It is now 2024 and you can find Orange Bird pretty much anywhere today, but given all the obstacles he had to overcome, this is one, if not Disney's only, true Cinderella story. Alright, so what did you think? I think it came out pretty good for my first ever edit of this style video. Let's talk about Orange Bird now, since he is one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, his backstory is so interesting. I, I don't remember any of this really growing up. I uh, vaguely remember him at the park and Florida very vaguely because I did live in Florida around uh, that time in the early 90s. But he wasn't a big, like, persona. Not as big as he was now. Uh, digging deeper into it, I found out he wasn't... He wasn't really that big of a persona in Florida. It's just during the time, and since the park wasn't open to get ready for Disney, it did inspire a lot of people. And when they vacationed, they went back to wherever they went. They had the Orange Bird stories to go with it. To think we almost lost this cute Orange Bird forever is just... I can't, I can't, I can't believe it. He's like a staple character in my mind within the Disney franchise, but I'm glad he brought it back. I'm glad Tokyo brought him back, and here we are now. What did you guys think of the story? 
I, 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 I'm like, wow, I think it's fascinating. So yeah, I just thought I'd put a clean story out there instead of like, I read through a few like blog posts and whatnot about the origin and it was all kind of scrambled. It wasn't really the right time frame. Things kind of didn't happen. What they said happened and whatnot. So I wanted to put a definitive video out there and version. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If I missed anything or anything, let me know. If you guys remember Orange Bird during that time, let me know. But uh, with that, we'll see you on the next one. All right, guys. Peace.